I'm like, in this business, everybody talks about institutionalization. And obviously, Fortress, as a publicly listed company, you have taken it to a level that is matched by very few other asset managers. What's your experience in building a truly international and institutional business? Tell us more about how Fortress did it. You know, from the very beginning, we had relatively large aspirations. You know, the idea of going public is a hard thing to get over because you're saying, you know, this is going to be permanent. You can't quit. You've got to build something that exists long before, long after you're there, and you've got to do it uh, so it doesn't break. And so. There was large investment in a compliance division, in legal, in accounting, and in infrastructure. Uh, we've made a large an investor relations group to try to be in touch with our clients, our LP clients, as well as the, the Fortress shareholders. And so there's a big economies of scale, uh, or a big upfront cost uh, that you have to deal with that in time hopefully gives you a huge economies of scale. You know, when we first went public, uh, things were growing really fast in all our businesses. and it all seemed a little bit easy. Uh, we ran into the buzzsaw of 2008 and realized uh, that we needed more infrastructure at our company. And, and hence, since then, I've brought in Dan Mudd to be the CEO. You know, Dan had been the CEO of Fannie Mae. Uh, we knew him for a long time before that at GE Capital. Uh, we had partnered with him. He'd been on our board, and so he was a very easy fit. And he's really been building the kind of institutional infrastructure to run the company to allow you know, Adam and I to run the liquid market businesses and really be CIOs as opposed to, you know, businessmen. You know, Pete Brigger building uh, uh, the distress business and West to focus on his portfolio companies and private equity. And so, with hindsight, we wish we'd done that in advance. And so, we made a lot of mistakes. Uh, through those mistakes, I think we've become a much better company. And I think about, you know, what's coming to the rest of the hedge fund community. You know, Obama was on TV today this financial regulation is going to happen. Uh, hedge funds are going to get regulated at one point. I really kind of see a future where you have bigger and bigger complexes because there's a big economies, uh, there's a big infrastructure need just to deal with something like an SEC investigation. And so we think we're well poised you know, for growth. Listen, in the long run, these businesses are about delivering returns to your investors. And so I always tell you know, my partners, we'll have a real big business if we continue to develop uh, deliver good returns, and we'll have a smaller business if our returns stink. And so it's two things. It's, it's delivering returns, and then it's actually doing what you say you're going to do in, in client service. And if you can go get those three things right, you're fine. The whole financial markets may be turned upside down. Banks may have may get rid of their prop trading. They may get rid of a stake in a hedge fund. What are the opportunities that a hedge fund like yours, an independent company, has going forward? Is is this the model? Is Fortress the model of the future? Well, I'd certainly like to hope so. Listen, the banks are our friends in a lot of ways. We have a symbiotic relationship with the banks. We need them as liquidity providers as much as they need us as customers. And I don't think in the long run they'll get rid of all their risk-taking capacity because that's what actually makes the capital markets function. It does look like there is going to be a push for you know, the Volcker bill uh, to get through. And you know, given the recent lawsuit at Goldman Sachs, there's a lot of momentum. It seemed very politically motivated to me, and there's a lot of momentum uh, to pass financial market reform. And so I'm guessing when all said and done and calmer minds prevail, banks will shed some proprietary trading but they'll still be big risk takers. But yes, you know, as they lose proprietary trading, those traders and that risk taking needs to get, get done somewhere. And it's gonna get done at large hedge fund platforms. It's just clear to me. Now, I also see the mutual fund business uh, wanting to move into the hedge fund business. And I think in time, you'll have a big alternative asset management business and there'll be some guys who are both in the alternative space and the traditional space. You know, we recently bought a company called Logan Circle. It was our first entry into non-alternative asset management. It was a small bite for us, but we went kind of went to walk before we run. And so I see, you know, uh, 
big financial institutions being able to provide asset management advice across the board to, to customers. That's interesting. And I guess U.S. Fortress, this is probably the direction you are going. Do you have a mission statement as a company? What's the future of Fortress? Where are you going? At our core, we're an alternative asset management shop whose primary mission is to deliver you know, superior returns to our investors. Right now, we have a suite of products. We see that expanding as we bring in new talent. Uh, we're going to also, um, as I talked about, uh, build a smaller uh, in hopefully not small forever, uh, you know, traditional asset management shop. But really the mission is to build out the alternative space. Uh, that's where the high margin business is. That's where our public shareholders originally, you know, came in and, and paid up for us. Global investors went through 08 and really were, were rattled and now they're looking at their portfolios and their, both their liabilities and their assets and trying to figure out, uh, you know, what to do. We hope to be a solution provider for the major pools of capital around the world. And uh, I think we already have a, uh, a lot to offer them, and, and I think in the future we want to be able to offer them more.